In this problem, a triangle is made of three bars, and each bar is three meters in length and two kilograms in mass, and it oscillates about one of the corners. We're asked to determine the natural frequency of this system. So uh, the first thing we do um, when we need to find the natural frequency of the system is we need to draw um, the system in a displaced position. And based on that, um, we can then uh, do the free body diagram and write in all the forces and then uh, do a, either some of forces or some of moments uh, depending on the situation. Okay, so the displaced system in this case would be um, the triangle um, pointing in some kind of direction like this. Um, so um, in this case, I'm gonna draw the free body diagram down here. Um, this is going to be the vertical direction, and uh, the triangle is going to be um, slanted to the side like this, like so. And again, this is not a perfect equilateral triangle, but in real life it would be a perfect equilateral triangle. Um, and the forces are the force due to gravity, uh, so Fg. Um, on uh, and this side here is pinned okay um so what we're going to do in this case is take a sum of moments um uh about um o over here okay um because uh, in this case everything is rotating so that's why we're taking a sum of moments um and um so the equation is going to be a sum of moments and we're going to take about o um, because there are reaction forces at O over here, so we have, uh, let me draw it in green, um, R, Y, and R, X. We do have reaction forces if we take the moment about O, that will be, that will cancel those two reaction forces. This is going to be equal to um, I naught alpha, okay? Um, and um, so what we need to do here is first of all take the sum of moments and then um, figure out what I is. Okay, so what I naught is. Uh, so we can actually start with I naught because it's it's simpler. Um, so I naught is the uh, moment of inertia about um, O here. Um, so this point here. Um, and there's going to be three components to it. So two of them are basically going to be these two bars and we can and starting from the end of the bar, and we just multiply by two because these two bars are identical in size and weight. And then we have a third bar over here, which we can take uh, I about the center here, and then use parallel axis and translate this distance over here. Okay, um, so that's how we're gonna calculate I about O. I O is gonna be equal to um, the two bars, so times two, um, times one third uh, m l squared, um, and then we have um, the bottom bar which has two terms to it. Um, so I'm going to put it in square brackets. One twelfth uh, m l squared uh, plus m d squared. Okay, so this is equal to two times one third ml squared plus uh, 1 12th ml squared plus m and this distance d here is going to be um, the length of um, bar times sine of 60 degrees. So L times sine of 60 degrees. Now why is that? It's because this angle here is 60 degree, degrees. This is also 60 and this is also 60 degrees because it's an equilateral triangle. And then since we're trying to find this um, distance here, um, so this height over here, so from here to here, um, this here is D. Um, we just take the sine of 60 times this hypotenuse, which is 3 meters, and that's going to give us D over here, okay? Uh, and so that's why we have L sine 60. And we can 
we have all of these parameters. We can plug everything in. So we have 2 times 1 third times the mass, um, which is um, 2 kilograms. Sorry, uh, times 2 kilograms times L, which is 3 meters squared, plus 1 twelfth times 2 kilograms times 3 meters all squared, plus uh, 2 kilograms uh, times 3 meters times sine of 60 degrees. Therefore, we get the final answer of I naught is equal to um, 27 uh, kilograms meters squared. Okay, so now we have I naught. Um, we just need to find, um, we just need to solve the left side of the moment equation, so the sum of moments. And as you can see about, oh, there's only one force that creates a moment. Um, and this force is going to have a moment arm that is, um, this is the moment arm, because the force points directly downwards. We need to find that um, distance uh, r over there. Okay, so um, the sum of moments about O is going to be equal to R times uh, FG, which is equal to R times MG. Okay, now how do we find that distance R? Well, we need to find the location of the center of gravity, because that's where the force of gravity acts. And since um, these two sides are equal, it's going to be along this vertical line. Okay, so that's where uh, along the y plane, but the x coordinates we're not sure. Um, but since we know it's a triangle, we know that for a triangle, um, the center of gravity is two thirds of the way down. Okay, um, so this is actually where g is located. Okay, um, so that distance there, we're going to call h. Okay, so this distance from this point here to g, we're going to call distance h. Okay, and if we calculate, if we go on the slanted triangle here, h is this distance that is um, slanted like that. Okay, so this distance from here to here, that's h. Okay, and um, to find r, what we need to do is we need to use um, theta, okay? Which theta is the angle that we're shifting everything by, all right? Um, so we can start plugging things in over here. So we have r, which is now going to be in terms of h um, and in terms of theta. So if you to find this distance over here, um, what we can do is we can simply take um, h times sine of theta, theta being the angle that we displace by over here. Okay, so I'm going to draw a bigger diagram of the uh, that small uh, triangle that I draw, drew in. Um, so we have the center of gravity over here, O over here, we have G over here, and then we have the normal over here, okay? So theta is gonna be, and let me draw everything in, in the correct colors. Theta is gonna be um, this angle over here, the angle by which we are um, displacing the system, okay? And the distance r is gonna be this distance over here. R, okay? So we already said that H is going to be two thirds of the way down um, of that height. Um, so H is going to be uh, equal to uh, two thirds of D. And we said that D was um, L sine theta. Um, so we have H being equal to two thirds times L times sine of 60 degrees. Okay, um, so now that we've displaced the system, 
Uh, we know what h is because h is constant. With this displacement theta, which is a new displacement we're adding on, we can find r, which is the moment arm for that force fg that acts at g over here. Okay, so now we can replace r with um, the following. Um, h, so we have h sine theta mg, which is also equal, we can plug in this equation for h, 2 thirds L sine 60, 2 thirds L sine of 60 degrees sine theta mg. Okay, and now we can plug everything into the moment equation over here and um, solve, and we have a differential equation. And from the differential equation, we can determine theta or we can determine omega n, okay? So on the left side, we have 2 thirds L sine of 60 degrees sine of theta mg. Um, and on the right side, we have um, I naught alpha, okay? So, and this is going to be, sorry, there's a negative sign in front here. Um, so, this is a differential equation. Well, it is a differential equation because this is equal to negative i naught theta double dot, but we have sine theta here, not theta, okay? Um, so this is complex, we can't directly solve, but what we can use is we can use a small angle approximation. So if uh, theta is small, then we can use the small angle approximation um, that says that uh, sine theta is approximately equal to theta. So we can actually replace that term with theta and get the following. Um, 2 thirds L sine 60 degrees mg theta plus I naught theta double dot is equal to zero. And we know that once we have an equation in this form to find the natural frequency, um, we just need to get rid of whichever term is in front of the theta double dot term um, and make it one. And then whichever term is in the front of the theta term or the, just, um, the variable um, without a derivative is the natural frequency squared. Okay, so the natural frequency omega n will be equal to uh, two thirds L sine of 60 degrees mg over i naught square rooted. Okay, and if we plug all the values in, we got two thirds L, um, which is uh, three meters times sine of 60 degrees times n, which is two kilograms, the mass, times 9.81 meters per second squared, divided by uh, 27 um, kilograms per meters, kilograms meter squared. Take the square root of it, and you get the following value. Like n is equal to uh, 1.9 uh, radians per second. And this is the final answer.